Church of Washington here for our Sunday school lesson for Sunday, September the 29th, 2024. We are in the fall quarter, two prophets of God, our unit to Daniel Faithful Prophetic Ministry. And our lesson for today is Daniel sees future kingdom, which is coming from Daniel the 8th chapter, the 19th through the 26th verse. And I will go to text read, the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be many days. Daniel 8 and the 26th verse. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and almighty God, here's once more again that we call on your most holy and your righteous name. We call upon you with thanksgiving in our heart, for we realize that we have so much to be thankful for. We thank you for life as well with us as it is. Thank you for our early rising this morning, allowing us to see a brand new day. A day we've never seen before and when it's gone, a day we'll never have again. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you open up our hearts and our minds that we may be receptive to your holy word. We pray for the sick all over the lands. We pray for comfort to families whose heads are bowed down in sorrow. And we pray for souls that are lost in the world of sin, touch it before it ever lasts and too late. And have the master strengthen us where we might be weak. Build us up where we are torn down and prop us on every leaning side. Give us more determination to run this race than it said before. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for you is worthy. We thank you and we love you. We ask these blessings, all blessings in the dollar name of Jesus. Amen. Our lesson today is Daniel sees future kingdom. And our lesson outline is one, future kings, Daniel 8, 19 through the 22nd verse. And our second outline is fearsome king, Daniel 8, 23rd through the 24th verse. And then our uh, third outline is final king, Daniel 8, the 25th through the 26th verse. Our devotional reading is coming from Daniel, the 8th chapter, the 2nd through the 14th verse. Beginning with the 2nd verse. And I saw in the vision, and it came to pass, when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulai. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river, a ram which had two horns, and the two horns was high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, and he and a, a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a noble horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I have seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with call against him, and smote the ram, and broke his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. And the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. 
and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be tried on the foot? In the last verse, And he said unto me, Until two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Amen. Daniel sees future kingdoms. The first six chapters of Daniel records events that took place in Babylon during Judah's captivity. However, Daniel prophecies of the future reach far beyond Daniel's life in Babylon, whereas they outline the entire course of history up to the very end time. In this week's lesson, Daniel received clarifying revelation concerning a vision that he had received about the events of the time of the end. The prophetic vision recorded in Daniel chapter 2, 7, 8, and 11 looks ahead to troubling time as successor, successive empire take their terms, ruling power on the world stage. Whereas all are doomed to ultimate destruction <clears throat> because in the end, the everlasting kingdom of the Lord will be established. The four world kingdom presented in the vision in Daniel chapter 2 and 7 are Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome, whereas Daniel had a first-hand view of the Babylonian Empire, and he lived to see the beginning of the Medo-Persian Empire. However, the Greek, the Greek Empire, still in the distant future, is the focus of the vision recorded in chapter 8. And our devotion reading the Psalms of uh, in the third year of King Belshazzar reign, another vision appeared to Daniel whereby he saw a ram by the river with two horns, which represented the Medo Persian Empire, whereas the last horn grew larger than the first horn. Daniel observed a unique ram rampage in all directions without any resistance, doing what he wanted and became great. Daniel beheld and saw a goat with tremendous speed and a notable horn between his eyes, which represent the kingship of Greece, charging and defeating the ram, whereas it smote the ram, breaking his two, breaking his two horns and casting it down to the ground and stomping on it. The goat, which referenced uh, Alexander the Great, waxed very great, and strong for a while, however, his great horn was broken and replaced with full horn scattered in different regions. The next notable rule is described as a little horn who, who was great, however, he treated godly things with contempt and vile disrespect, blaspheming God and persecuting the Jewish people and despising their religion. He desecrated the temple Interfered, interfered with Jewish worship and made war on the people of Israel. And our first outline is future king, which is the 19th through the 22nd verse. Number 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. In the vision, Daniel overheard two saints conversing, wondering how long will this terrible situation continue, whereas the period is given of 2,300 days. When Daniel heard this, he was perplexed by the vision, but also enlightened and sought to understand the entire vision, whereas God instructed the angel Gabriel to explain the vision to the prophet. Daniel, a godly and courageous man, was so overcome by fear in the angel present that when Gabriel said to him, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Daniel fell on his face into a deep sleep, whereby the angel touched him and set him upright. Gabriel began making known by stating that the vision related to the last end of the indignation and the end 
whereas the explanation here, given here refers to the end of Jewish persecution on a particular king, but it also foretells something about the end times. Daniel's vision depicted the rise of a brutal king who would clash with God's people for many days, interfering with sacrifice and offering and the desecration of the temple. Then number 20, the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the king of Medom and Persian. One of the first images Daniel saw was a male sheep, a ram with two slightly different horns, whereas this animal, animal depicted the allies king of Media and Persia. Over time, the later arising Persian overtook and assimilated the Medes, whereas the kingdom became known as Persia. This empire was powerful and ran over many nations, pushing his empire west, north, and south. Then number 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. The second animal Daniel saw was a rough goat moving at incredible speed, which represented the kingdom of Greece and his first king, Alexander the Great. The great horn between the goat eyes that conquered many nations. Daniel see this goat rapidly attacking the ram and overpowering it and displacing the Medo-Persian Empire, whereby his army speed and military power rendered the mighty Persian helpless. This represented the ferocity and speed of Alexander Conquest. However, after rapidly expanding his territory, Alexander died suddenly, and his kingdom was divided among four successors. Kings and kingdom comes and go according to God's plan for history. And then the last verse is outlined number 22. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. Even the wickedness of evil leaders is used by the sovereign Lord in his plans. Daniel's vision had included a prophecy about the rise of Alexander the Great that was depicted in an earlier dream as a four-winged leopard. However, in this vision, it is a fast-moving goat with a prominent horn which defeats his rival. After the victory, the goat's horn shatter and four new horns arrive, pointing in all directions. After Alexander the Great death, the vast kingdom was split into four on the four of his advisors. However, none of these would have the same power or influence as a unified empire would have. From the arrangement of the four kingdoms, another leader would arise, whereas Daniel's vision portrayed this figure as evil and destructive. Just as Daniel received help to understand his vision, the believer also received help to understand God's word. We do not know the future beyond what God has revealed to us, but we know the one who has already ordained the future, whereas nothing is beyond his reach and nothing is outside of his plan. Since God has revealed much about the future, it is clear he wants us to know about it and benefit from it. And that in our first outline, future kings, and our second outline is fearsome, King, which is the 23rd and the 24th verse. Number 23. And in the latter time of that kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. The little horn that arise among the other four horns of the goat is described as a king of fierce countenance, whereas he would be very stern and severe in his looks and action. He would be cunning, a master of intrigue and deception. Deception. Interpreters vary in their identification of this person. However, the best fit team to be a Tychonus, the fourth Epiphanes, 
who became king of Syria, one of the four territories that arose out of Alexander Empire and the area that included ancient Israel. He warred with other remnants of Alexander Conquest and heavily persecuted the Jewish people. Antigonus was determined to unify his kingdom by eliminating religious differences. Whereas he spitefully outlawed Jewish religious practice such as Sabbath observing and feasts and defiled the temple by sacrificing an unclean pig and spreading his blood everywhere. This also seemed to be a dual fulfillment prophecy. Whereas the figure depicted in this part of Daniel's vision appeared to be both a tickiness, the fourth epiphany, and the end time person commonly called the Antichrist in Revelation uh, 13 chapter. Number 24. <clears throat> and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. As long as evil exists in this world, God's people can expect persecution. This part of Daniel's vision predicted the rise of a terrible evil ruler who would persecute God's people and be suddenly destroyed by God's power. And Tychicus wielded formal power, whereas he appeared to be unstoppable. Although his evil was great, it was not by his own power. Whereas some take this to mean that in God's sovereign plan, he permitted the rise of Antigonus to accomplish divine purposes. However, others believe <clears throat> that it referred to the forces of Satan enabling the evil ruler to succeed. Antigonus was known for his cruel brutality. <clears throat> where this will also be true of the Antichrist. Antigonus was known for his flattery and smooth tone, whereas the common antitype Antichrist will strike a covenant with Israel. Antigonus was empowered by Satan, but allowed by God, whereas the same will be true of the common Antichrist. Antigonus looked like a total success, Whereas the common Antichrist will look like a winner until God tumble, tumble his reign. Antigonus not only destroyed his enemy, but also harshly persecuted the people of God. Whereas the common Antichrist will also destroy and prosecute. And that in our second outline, fearsome king, and our final outline is final king which is the 25th and the 26th verse. Number 25. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy men. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken with our hand. What was prophesied was fully Fulfilled, well, fulfilled through Antigonus. However, the prophecy looked beyond Antigonus to a future person of whom Antigonus is only a foreshadow. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love or the truth that they might be saved. Both the rule of Antigonus Epiphany in the past and of the Antichrist in the future are marked by the sea, which characterized Antigonus' rule, where his treachery and intrigue caught his big victim unaware and unprepared, and his overwhelming pride led him to exalt himself by claiming divine honors, whereas the common Antichrist would also exalt himself, whereas he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Antichrist hated God and fought against the people of God, whereas the same would be true of the common Antichrist, 
who will oppose, oppose the prince or princes, blaspheme God, and persecute the church, however his life will be cut short. And then our last verse, number 26. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which is was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. The power of this evil ruler will be broken with our hands, whereas his destruction will not come by human power, but by divine intervention. Gabriel's description of the first king may have not only been pointing to Antichrist, but also beyond his time to the Antichrist. Daniel was reassured by Gabriel that the vision was true, whereas Daniel was told to seal up the vision, preserving it for the future, whereby the fulfillment of the prophecy would not occur until many days had passed. The meaning of the prophecy though explained to an extent, would not be entirely understandable to Daniel, whereas only after his fulfillment would it mean and become clear. Not all of God's <clears throat> prophetic revelation can be understood fully right now, but we can trust him to reveal it to us in his time. Prophetic scripture is not designed to satisfy our curiosity, but it is designed to teach us about God, comfort, and encourage us in our troubles and spur us on to godly living and exalt the sovereign Lord. Like generation before us, we may not live to see the fulfillment of all that has been foretold, but these prophecies remind us that our Lord, the true God, is worthy of all our praises and our worship. Amen. This ain't our lesson for today. And on next Sunday, October the 6th, our lesson will be Daniel intercedes for Israel, which is coming from Daniel the ninth chapter, the fourth through the 14th verse. And our devotion reading is coming from Daniel the ninth chapter, the 21st through the 27th verse. Our Sunday school virtual telecast is on at 8 o'clock a.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook and YouTube page. Our sanctuary Sunday school starts at 9.30 a.m. Our Sacred River Sunday morning worship is broadcast live on Facebook at 10.30 a.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Our Wednesday night Bible study is live on Facebook at 6 o'clock p.m. on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill Facebook page. Both broadcasts are available later on YouTube on the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill channel. We just praising and thanking God for a wonderful worship and fellowship service that we had on last Sunday on our family and friends day. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and almighty God, here's once more again that we call on your holy name. We call upon your Father to say thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for providing for us everything that we have. Well, Heavenly Master, you've been so good to us, Father. Woke us up right early this morning, allowed us to see a brand new day. And we just thank you, Father, for allowing our golden moments to run down to this present time. Well, Heavenly Master, you have been so good to us, for you have brought us from a mighty long way. You have opened doors for us, and you have made ways out of no way. You have kept us when danger was all around us. You didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. And we can't do nothing but say thank you, Father. But you've been so good to us. Now, Heavenly Master, we continue to pray for the sick all over the land. We pray for comfort to families whose heads are bowed down in sorrow. And we pray for guidance to those who are lost in the world of sin. Let them see the need to turn thy life over to you before it ever lasts and too late. Now, Heavenly Master, we ask that you strengthen us where we is weak and build us up where we are torn down. Prop us on every leaning side. Give us more determination to run this race that is set before. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for you as worthy. We give you all the honor 
And we give you all the glory. We thank you and we love you, Father. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. We want to thank you once again for tuning in to our Sunday school lesson. And we want to pray that you have a good rest of the day. And until we meet again on next Sunday, we pray that you have a good rest of the week. May the Lord continue to bless you and to keep you in his loving care. Amen.